In this one, we're going to go over how you can make your Python code much faster with a JIT compiler called Number. We're then going to compare how the new speed compares to the same program written in C. We'll then move on to talk about the pros and cons of the Number package and when and when you wouldn't use it. Okay, let's get right into it. What is a JIT compiler? JIT stands for just in time. This means that your program is compiled as the code is running, unlike a traditional compiler where you compile all the code up front. JIT compilers can have somewhat of an advantage in that they know the parameters being passed to a function at the time they compile it. An upfront compiler just has no idea about that and just runs its standard optimizations. Okay, so what is the code we are going to JIT compile? Well, I play a game called Path of Exile and it has a mechanic called Lucky Block, which means you try to block twice and you take the best outcome. Now, I could have worked this out purely mathematically, but my maths simply aren't that good. So this program uses time and random. Time is just to get the timing, so we wouldn't need it otherwise. I then have a function which runs my simulation. It takes in I simulation runs, which is the number of runs we're going to do, and then the base block chance. We then run the simulation for each of the simulation runs. And we basically compare two randomly generated numbers to see if they are less than or equal to the base block chance. If they're less than or equal to, we class that as a block. And then after the simulation runs, we return the block value. The next two lines of code are just setting up the variables for the base block chance, which in our case is 65%, and the simulation runs, which is 100 million. The more simulation runs we do, the more accurate the figure we'll get. And then the next line of code is really just running the function and printing out the results. So first we print out running lucky block simulation with however many iterations. We're then going to start a timer, run the simulation, stop the timer, and then print out how long it took and our block chance. The C code does exactly the same thing. Okay, so running the Python code now and through the power of video editing, I'm going to speed this up because it takes a while. And we can see the execution is complete in 43.18 seconds. That's pretty slow, but you could still live with it. Running the C code now and this completed in 1.73 seconds. So the C code is almost 25 times faster than the Python code. Let's see if we can bring that somewhere closer. So if we go to the terminal in PyCharm and I'm going to pip install number and hit enter. And very, very quickly the package installs. Now to make the code changes that make the code faster. And as I said, two line changes will do this. First off, we need to import ngit from number. So from number, import ngit. And then we need to decorate our simulation function with at ngit. And if we run the code again, we see it completes in 1.19 seconds. So those two line changes have made such a difference to the speed of the program. In fact, it outperforms the C and a little bit on why I think that is in a moment. Now, this change isn't quite the way it seems. Because I'm JIT compiling, it will actually take some time while the program's running to compile that function. So I'm going to add some timers just so you can see how long it takes. So I'm just going to capture the time at the start and the end of going around the function. So as the function runs for the first time, it will be JIT compiled and that is the time it will take. And then I'm just going to output the JIT compilation time. So if you run this again, we'll see the JIT compilation took 0.0035 seconds, which is a very, very small number. And the runtime is still 1.19 seconds. And we'll just run the C code again to see if it got any faster or there was something going on at the time. And it finished in 1.73 seconds again. So no real change there. It's pretty consistent. So if we look at the C code now, and I'm building it using this batch file. So you can see I have the compiler. I'm building main CCP to block sim, and I'm using the optimization level two, which is the fastest you can get on the Microsoft compiler as far as I'm aware. So what are some pros and cons of using number? Well, we just saw the pro. There is a huge performance boost, especially when we're dealing with numerical operations and loops. Second, just to get a function to compile and a really basic scenario, it's super easy to change the code to benefit from this performance gain. Another pro is that it works really well with NumPy. NumPy is a number package that runs in C, so it works interoperably with that. It also supports parallelization if your use case supports it, so you'll get a benefit from multi-core processors. And again, we haven't even touched that there. This use case doesn't support it. You can also use CUDA to run the code on the graphics card. I haven't delved into this yet, but that would give you insanely fast code if your use case supports it. And it uses LLVM on the back end to actually compile the code into really optimized machine code. LLVM stands for Low Level Virtual Machine. It has its own pros and cons, but we're not going to get into that right now. Okay, on to the cons now. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. The biggest con is there is limited scope. Not all Python code can benefit from number. As I said, it works best with loops and numerically intensive tasks. 
Sort of related to this is compatibility issues. It doesn't work with a lot of Python libraries such as pandas, which you tend to use in NumPy in a couple of cases. Another big con is it only really works with functions. There is experimental support for packages. I tried to move the tic-tac-toe program into it that we made in a previous video and it just didn't work. Now I could certainly make it work by refactoring the code, but it's a lot more invasive there and that's really where the learning curve comes in. It's really simple to do simple stuff when you're dealing with a graphics card and you've got to write kernels and things like that. It will get a lot steeper in the learning curve department. And also in my particular case, we were using NGIT which basically JIT compiles with no Python interaction, so it compiles it down to, to C. There is an option to work more compatibly with Python code, which would be JIT, but that doesn't have the no Python support, so it will go between Python libraries and C libraries. So you won't get the full benefit there from the speed. So in this particular use case, which was completely by accident, the JIT code runs slightly faster than the C code. I can only suspect that this is down to random number generation and the default one in C must be slower. I can't think of any other reason the C code would be slower. I was inspired to make this video by you guys. The overwhelming number of comments I got from the Just How Slow Is Python video was staggering and a lot of people said have you tried number and I hadn't. So I gave it a try, very new to it, but my simple use case just happened to fit so well with it. I just had to share the difference in speed. It really is immense for such a tiny code change. And now for the shameless plug. If you like this video and find it useful, then I would love it if you'd hit that like button. You could also click subscribe so you know when I'm next going to publish. And if you want to see the video that made this happen, you can see it top left now. Just how slow is Python? And with that, thank you for watching. And I hope to catch you on the next one.